Welcome to another lesson in aerospace engineering. In this video, we continue describing the flow of air or its properties. You can watch the first part here where we describe the compressibility of air. And today we continue with another property, which is viscosity. Viscous material, what did I tell you? Now, what is viscosity? Let's look at water and honey. These are both fluids or liquids, and now watch how they flow. Which one of them you would think has higher viscosity? You would probably guess that honey is more viscous because it's harder to make it move. But why does that happen? This happens because there's a lot of friction between the molecules of honey and this friction keeps the molecules from moving. So that is why honey flows slower. Or we can also say that it is difficult to make honey flow. Now let's go back to the air. It's probably difficult for you to imagine the air being as viscous as honey because you never saw anything like that. And in reality, no one saw air like that, because it's impossible for the air to reach the viscosity of honey. If we compare the viscosity of water and air, air is 50 times less viscous than water. And if we compare the viscosity of water and honey, honey has 2000 times higher viscosity than water. So you can calculate how much more viscous honey is than air. So what do we mean when we talk about the viscosity of air? Well, we mean that the friction between the molecules of air has increased. I'm sensing some friction here. In comparison to the air far from the airfoil. In order to understand that better, let's look at an airfoil. So let's look at a zoomed in airfoil like this. And of course, as usual, we have the airflow around it. But I'm not going to continue these streamlines because it's important to see what happens on the surface of the airfoil. When the air flows around the airfoil, some molecules stick to the surface of an airfoil. It sticks to any flat surface! Let's draw them here. Also very zoomed in just so it's clear for us. And they stick because there is friction between the surface of the airfoil and air that flows around it. So when these molecules stick to the airfoil, which speed they have, they will just stay there with speed the same as an airfoil, but in relation to the airfoil, they will have a speed of zero. V equals zero. But we know that far from the airfoil, the air has speed of v infinity, or free stream velocity. Let's draw it here, free stream velocity. But what happens far from the airfoil? The air around here doesn't know there's an airfoil in between. So the air here still has velocity v infinity. And now, how is it possible to have air molecules with v infinity here? and air molecules with V equals zero here. This is all possible because of the boundary layer. What boundary layer? Unknown. A boundary layer is a thin layer around the airfoil in which there happens a gradient in velocity. In order for air molecules reach V infinity starting from V zero. So this gradient in velocity looks like this with velocity increasing in every thin layer of the boundary layer. So here is when air molecules have the same speed as free stream and the airfoil stops affecting the air around it. So we said that viscous air is the air that has more friction than free stream air. So where does this friction come from? Well, if we look at these molecules of air stuck on the surface of the airfoil, they are not moving. But they are affecting another layer of molecules here, 
which had higher speed but had to slow down because there's friction between these two layers of molecules. Ogres have layers, onions have layers. And the second layer of molecules affects another layer of molecules and slows them down. So that is how friction occurs in this boundary layer. But slowly, these molecules have higher speed than these molecules, and these molecules have higher speed than these molecules. So eventually, we reach V infinity. But inside the boundary layer, there will be more friction, and so there will be more viscosity. But as we mentioned in the previous video, the effects of compressibility and viscosity take place at high speeds of air, or high V infinity at speeds closer to speeds of sound and higher. Well, I flew in a supersonic jet. So when the airflow is slow, we can disregard these conditions here because they don't affect the properties of air that much, especially when we solve problems or design new aircraft. In that case, we call this airflow inviscid, which means the viscosity effect is very small. So now we learned what the difference is between viscous and inviscid flows. And in the next video, we continue exploring new topics in aerospace engineering. Click subscribe in order not to miss another lesson. And I see you next Thursday. Bye.